here. Uh, the, op the open uh, uh, session study uh, number one, which is re uh, city events, recreation, and community services. Uh, two, Wayne Manor Adult Care Center Community Development. And three, the R1 uh, Second uh, Dwelling Unit Development Standards Community Development. And now we will also recess to closed session, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, government code 5495.6. And we do have two items for discussion, actually a total of three, or I should say four different items. So I'm not going to open up. We're going to go into closed session at this point. Then we'll come back out and open up the public communication. So at this point... Let's go ahead and go into um, closed session. We shouldn't take more than po possibly maybe about five minutes, legal counsel? About five minutes? All right, thank you. All right, we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, good evening. Buenas, buenas noches. I uh, just want to, I'm going to have our legal counsel read something with reference to the particular subject that we'll be talking about, which is the Wayne Manor uh, Adult Care Center Community Development. So at this point, I'm going to have our legal counsel, uh, Mr. Tafoya, uh, cover uh, a particular statement. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, members of the uh, public. Uh, Please be advised that the Wayne Manor Adult Center project requires discretionary permits by the City Council or the Planning Commission, such as a conditional use permit or some other permit. This project will go to the Planning Commission first for consideration. Because this project may be appealed to the City Council, it is important that the City Council members not make any decisions or form any decisions about this project tonight. Okay. In addition, I would counsel against asking any questions that would suggest that you have formed an opinion about this case. The presentation is for informational purposes only, and no comments or decisions should be made as to the final disposition of this project tonight. You may, of course, ask questions, and it, they may be only for informational purposes. So I want the public to understand that the council cannot tell you today whether they're in favor or against the project because they may have to vote on it at some other time. And when, is, when that is the case, they can't make up their mind ahead of time. That's illegal and against the law. So I have advised them that they can't do that, nor can they communicate to you today uh, any feelings one way or another. And so I don't want you to think that they're doing that for any purpose other than that's the law. All right. Okay. Th thank you. Real quick, just want to try my best in Spanish. Uh, how many speak? ¿Cuántos hablan uh, no hablan inglés? Did, was that clear? Okay. Voy a tratar de hacerlo mejor. Vamos a explicarles hoy. Simplemente va a ser esta cita para información sobre el proyecto, porque hay un proceso que se tiene que tomar para la persona que está aplicando para este proyecto. ¿Est estamos de acuerdo? Si es que nosotros los elegidos no vamos a tomar una opinión de sí o no apoyamos el proyecto hasta que el proceso siga adelante. A ustedes les voy a decir claramente lo que van a tener que hacer es seguir el proceso. Primeramente se va a ir con la, el Planning Commission, los comisionados de la ciudad de planes. And I don't, we don't have a date when that's going there, do we? We, we do not. Okay. Vamos a informarles a ustedes. Thank you, Amy. ¿Cuándo va a ser ese día? Para que todos vayan ese día. So everyone, the first process is going to be the planning commission. So I will encourage you to go there because that's when you can give your opinion and the planning commissioners will have reviewed and also vote on it in that particular area. Now, if for some odd reason it doesn't pass at the planning commission level, then the developer can appeal it, then it would come to the city council. Is that clear to everyone? So the must I see this. So la primer, el primer punto va a ir con las planes de la, uh, del comisionado de los planes de la ciudad. Y si allí no pasa este proyecto, entonces el dueño de la propiedad puede apelar 
esa decisión con miembros del concilio que hacemos nosotros. Entonces, a, allí nosotros vamos a decidir si apoyamos el proyecto y nuestras opiniones. Esto lo que le estoy diciendo es por la ley, la ley, los códigos de la ciudad y la ley del estado de California. Así es que, por favor, uh, les quiero decir ahorita, cuando ustedes van a hablar aquí, simplemente va a ser información. Nosotros no vamos a responder sí o no, porque es el proceso. ¿Me entiendes? ¿Estamos de acuerdo? Pueden levantar sus manos si están de acuerdo con mi, con mi esta, español mocho. Pero lo que no se me olvida que tengo un lopal en la frente. Ok, so just want to just, just wanna remind everyone. So what I'm sharing here is a process that it's going to go to the planning commission first. If it fails there, then the developer can appeal it to the city council. Then it comes to the city council, then we will ultimately have the decision. All the residents will have an opportunity. I will encourage you to attend the planning commission because you have the right to speak and to determine what you ultimately would like to see in that particular uh, 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 parcel. But of course, we know that the owner has already applied. However, nothing has been approved. So I want to make that very clear. If it does not pass by the planning commissioner, planning commissioner, the total of five, and say, for instance, if it does pass, the project goes. If it does not, again, it could, but if it does not, then the owner, uh, developer of the project has a right to appeal it over to the city council, and then we, at that particular point, will make the decision on this particular project. So is that clear to everyone? Okay, so today, it's going to be information that gets documented. When you speak, it gets recorded. We are not going to share our opinion agree or disagree with you today because we have to allow the process by, by, by city ordinance and by state law that is mandated that we follow these particular uh, uh, um, um, ordinances and, and laws. All right. City oh, Mayor, if yes, I may? Sir. Yes. Oh, okay. That's right. I'm glad you're mad. Hold on. Sorry about that. And I did forget. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. If, say, for instance, if it does pass or doesn't, then a resident yourself that live around that area can also appeal it to the city council. Otra cosa se me olvidó, y me acordó el, el abogado, que ciudadanos como ustedes también pueden apelar la decisión uh, si no están acuerdos o acuerdos eh, en, cuando están en el departamento de los planes de la ciudad, los comisionados. Okay? All right, thank you. At this point, Council Member Ricardo. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I also just like to add... Uh, Today, if you would like, to, we have two meetings today. One at 5:30 is the one that's taking place now. Uh, there's an opportunity for public communications. That would mean you can come up and say whatever you'd like to say. Also, at seven o'clock, we have also a regular council meeting, which also has a public communications portion. So you can also speak on the same topic or any topic you'd wish at the seven o'clock meeting. And we, at the seven o'clock regular council meeting, we get into public communications about 7.30 to, to 8 o'clock. Now, Mayor, I guess I wanted to see if we could... Oh, okay. Hoy tenemos dos juntas. El primero empieza la junta especial a las cinco y media, en que estamos hoy, ahorita. El otro a las siete es una junta regular que tenemos cada otro mes. Y las dos juntas tienen oportunidad para hablar en las comunicaciones públicas cuando el alcalde anuncia Cualquier persona puede venir, tienen tres minutos para hablar en cualquier tema que quieren gustar ir a hablar. Entonces, hoy pueden hablar uh, ahora la, en esta junta o en el siguiente, o pueden hablar en las dos juntas, como ustedes gustan. Alma, le voy a pedir al alcalde si se puede. Yo, yo seré, creo que es mejor a tener la presentación primero y después vamos a, a dar oportunidad para opiniones. Si llega a las siete, entonces podemos, se pueden quedar a la siguiente junta y seguir hablando en la siguiente junta para que ustedes sepan que hay oportunidades para hablar en dos juntas y no nada más uno. So, Mayor, I'd like yeah. to ask you if we could do the presentation yeah. first. Yes. Let the public Perfect. speak and then we'll go to the next. Perfect. Thank you, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. So at this point, what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and ha open up the, um, bring actually the developer. Or is he here? The man. Okay, if you could please come up to the lectern. The, uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is David Coloma. Um, I'm the uh, owner and the person who's planning this project. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak before you and present my project. It's really a dream come true to be able to do this in my hometown. Um, 
Do you want me to just go ahead and start? Yeah, let's just go ahead. This is it right here, right? Am I correct? That, that's it right okay. there. Um, those are some drawings of uh, what potentially we're, we're planning to do. So let me get right from the get-go. In the other presentations, we've kind of learned um, from them, so I want to start from what we learned. Um, at Wayne Manor, uh, we will not admit any person with a history of violence or sexual predator, which would also be against the law since the school is so, mm -hmm. so close. Uh, what we, the residents that we are going to be admitted, uh, which are adult mentally ill, ages 26 to no, 51. Uh, real, real, real quick, is there, is there someone I could translate in Spanish so we could get everyone in a group so they could translate? Una persona que puede traducir de inglés en español para las personas, para que quiero yo que todos estén uh, oyendo lo que está diciendo eh, la persona que está hablando en este momento. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, si hay o no? I can try and do it in both if you like. Can you? Yeah. All right. Okay. Entonces, lo que va a ser, lo que va, lo que me, me está pidiendo, what, what's your name again? Sorry about that. David. Okay. Me, uh, David, lo que va a hacer va, va a darles en las dos idiomas. Okay. Go ahead, David. Okay. So, lo que dije anteriormente es que en el, ese proyecto no, no vamos a, a tener ninguna persona que tenga un, un pasado de violencia o que sea un, uh, pre, uh, que tenga uh, uh, historia de, de abuso sexual de cualquier manera. So, eh, eh, vamos a enfocarnos al más con adultos de la edad de 26 a 51 que tienen enfermedades mentales. Okay, so we're going to focus on the 26 to 51 adults, male and female, who um, have a bipolar disorder, major depression, or schizophrenia. Nos vamos a enfocar en, en pacientes que tienen uh, depresión o, bipolar, o son, uh, tienen bipolar o son, uh, tienen esquizofrenia. Uh, en nuestra residencia vamos a tener uh, ciertas reglas. Vamos a pedirles y exigirles que el, el residente tenga respeto hacia sí mismo, su comunidad, a los trabajadores, uh, a la casa y a las otras personas que viven en la casa. Uh, una de las reglas principales van a ser que se tomen sus medicamentos. Si no se toman el medicamento, una vez ya vamos a estar con el teléfono hablándole al doctor y a los tra trabajadores que ellos tienen en, en, dentro de la comunidad con programas como Pacific Clinics, Inky, o Telecare. Um, y vamos a también exigirles um, que tengan metas en sus vidas, porque no nomás queremos tener a, a darles vivienda a personas, sino quiero, queremos ayudarles a la persona que recuperen su vida. Y la única manera de poder hacerlo es con, con metas. So at Wayne Manor, our, our three principal rules are going to be respect, respecting yourself, community, staff, I'm sorry, that's supposed to say peers, not papers, and the house rules. Um, one of the, our major points will be uh, for our, our residents to take their medications. If a client uh, resident does not take their, their medications, we were going to be on the phone that same day with their doctors or the case managers, social workers, uh, whatever mental health agency is attached, such as Pacific Clinics, Inky, or, or Telecare. Um, the other thing that we're going to be focusing on is working with our residents to have a goal in their life. And that kind of, I think, sets us apart from most boarding cares, um, is that part where we want our, our residents to recover back their lives. And, the, and a way of doing that is through establishing some goals so that they can either go back to school um, or get an, an education or, you know, reunify with their family. Um, Part of that is lost in the development process when um, mental illness hits. Uh, una de las cosas que, que estaba diciendo ahorita es de que el, la persona que, que le da esa enfermedad usualmente pierde en el desarrollo uh, muchas oportunidades. So, la, nuestra meta tercera que está ahí de que la persona ponga metas en su vida va a ser uh, uno de los uh, principios uh, focales que vamos a, a empujar a nuestros residentes para que ellos puedan recuperar sus vidas y quizás regresar a trabajar o a la escuela o reunificarse con sus familias. So these are the, the three uh, major uh, mental illness that we're, we're going to be focusing on. Um, esas son las, las tres de, uh, um, enfermedades que vamos a estar enfocándonos, la depresión, bipolar y esquizofrenia. So estas son, uh, uh, la depresión, um, va, veces, ese cliente es, le, no tiene muchos deseos de hacer nada, so por, eh, nuestro enfoque con las metas va a ser muy grande en, en ese tipo de cliente. Um, so the, the depression um, client or resident um, 
we're going to be hitting them hard with uh, with these three goals that I talked about earlier, specifically the, the setting goals in their lives so that we can motivate them and get them out and working with the case managers and with the doctors. One of the uh, the areas that we've learned through these presentations is uh, the community and, my, and our neighbors um, concern with the kids when they go to school and when they come back. So I don't have a problem in in having some staff out there in the front in the morning and in the evenings. And, and, and by that, I'm not saying that my clients uh, or my residents, they're, they're, they're dangerous. It's just, it's to help feel the community feel at ease. And if that helps me develop a relationship with them so that they can trust us, then I'm more, more than happy to do something like that. Um, una de las cosas que ha, ha surgido cuando hemos hecho estas presentaciones es de que la mayoría de nuestros vecinos tienen uh, preocupación cuando los niños van a la escuela o se salen de la escuela. So, uh, mi idea es tener a uno de los trabajadores afuera durante esas horas para que la comunidad se sienta confortable y empezar a, a establecer una relación con ellos para que haya más confianza. So, uh, what is an adult residential facility? Um, basically, it's a home for disabled um, adults. Like I mentioned before, people with um, depression, schizophrenia, or bipolar disorder. Our emphasis is going to be, uh, or the services we're going to be providing is cooking, cleaning, um, setting up doctor's uh, appointments, either at, at our house or, at, um, or they would be taken out to the clinics. Uh, and uh, one thing that will set us apart, I think, from the rest of the boarding cares is, again, with the recovery principle in mind, that people can recover their lives is groups. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so, ¿qué, ¿qué es lo que yo estoy haciendo? Es una, es una casa, un hogar, en la cual estos eh, tipos de personas que tienen estas des desabilidades van a vivir. Nosotros les vamos a proveer uh, comida, les vamos a cocinar por ellos, vamos a ayudarles a limpiar. Um, les vamos a dar citas con los doctores, uh, o sea, en la casa, o los vamos a llevar a la clínica uh, donde está el doctor, dependiendo qué, qué, qué es lo que pida el doctor. Y una cosa que nos va a hacer uh, un poco diferente de otros uh, uh, negocios como esto es de que vamos a dar uh, grupos, grupos que se van a enfocar en la recuperación. Uh, la, re la recuperación es, es uno de los principales más grandes uh, que yo tengo en mi corazón, que yo creo que en mis 20 años de trabajar en esto, que pueda ayudar a nuestros clientes no solo a vivir ahí y colectar un cheque, sino que ser uh, buenos miembros de nuestra comunidad para que ellos también den a la comunidad. Um, the last part that I said there in Spanish was uh, the recovery model and, and the groups. It's, for me, it's, it's at the core of what I want to do because I want to teach and encourage my residents not just to, you know, live here and just be a bump on the log, but to actually move forward in their lives and be able to give back to their communities and to themselves. How are we going to select the clients? Um, generally, clients are referred by uh, mental health agencies such as Pacific Clinics, Telecare, or Inky. Those are the major ones around this area. Um, hospitals or private uh, resources. Um, ¿Cómo se refieren los clientes a un tipo de negocio como esto? Es uh, básicamente hay agencias de salud mental como Telecare, uh, Pacific Clinics y Inky. Ellos tienen uh, trabajadores sociales o case managers y ellos refieren a, un, a una persona hacia nuestro hogar o los hospitales o en, hay también casos en cual uh, gente privada viene y pregunta y nos refieren. Parte del, del proceso es de que ellos nos dan su expediente o copias del expediente con una evaluación de lo que ha pasado con esta persona desde que le sucedió la enfermedad hasta el, el día actual. También vamos a pedir notas del doctor y notas de los trabajadores para ver cómo está el cliente. La otra, paz, la, la otra fase de eso sería uh, una entrevista con el cliente para ver si es esa persona uh, es un buen match. I don't know how to translate that. Um, uh, es adecuado para poder ver, uh, vivir ahí con nosotros. Y la última uh, pase sería invitarlos a que ellos vengan y visitan uh, nuestra propiedad, nuestras casas, para ver si ellos les gustan. Um, part of the, the admit or the enrollment process is after we get the referral, we get certain documentation like uh, an evaluation, a, his, a psych history, doctor's notes, case manager's notes. We review that. Myself and the administrator 
and then we interview the, the person to see if they're a good fit for our facility. And the final step would be to invite them to come check out our facility to see if, if they like it. You know, it's got to be a good fit for us, and it's got to be a good fit for that person as well. I mentioned the uh, license administrator. Um, so this is the person that we're going to hire who has a state license with community care licensing through the state of California. Um, they're going to be running the facility on Monday through Friday and on the weekends as well. Uh, along with myself, we'll be the ones that will be interviewing the potential residents of our facilities to see if they're, again, a good fit for us. Um, and like I mentioned, we're, uh, we're, we're going to do a thorough investigation of the charts. Being a case manager myself with the Department of Mental Health, um, I know how, how things work and I can use that history. Um, I know what paperwork to request to look for. I know the red flags to look for. Um, and like I mentioned before, um, it, it's in my best interest in running my business to have ideal clients and not problematic clients. Um, so that's what we're going to focus. Um, so como he, he mencionado anterior, um, el WAP Vamos a conseguir un administrador que tiene una licencia a través del estado de California para correr una casa o un negocio como de este tipo. Esa persona y yo vamos a ser las personas que vamos a entrevistar y re, a revisar estos expedientes para ver que esta persona que, que nos están refiriendo va a ser una persona adecuada para nuestra propiedad. Porque es, es en mi interés tener una persona que, que no va a ser problemática. Porque quién quiere tener un negocio que el mal le da pro, le dé problemas. Um, también hay, um, hay hay recursos en la en la ley de California. Digamos si un cliente uh, da problemas um, se le puede dar uh, tres días para que se vaya. Entonces um, yo no tengo problema usando eso o dándole 30 días para que se vaya. Also within the community care licensing. There's some, some rules where I can give a three-day notice if a client becomes a problematic and they, they, can be, um, they can leave my facility. And also, I, we can provide 30-day notices if a client becomes problematic as well. Uh, my mission statement is uh, where people come to find a home and recover their life. Um, I believe this wholeheartedly. I've been working in this field 20 years. Um, a lot of my clients that I have now have always been raised with the notion that they can't, they can't do anything. You know, they're just supposed to take their medications, and that's the vein of the existence of their lives. And uh, I don't believe that. I believe a person can complete their goals, or dreams, or aspirations, no matter what disability they have, even if it's a mental illness. I know um, in society today, somebody who has mental illness, they're very stigmatized. And people fear them. They think that they're very violent, but it's it's the opposite. You know, uh, a person with mental illness is most most likely to be a victim than than the perpetrator. Um, and I understand the the community's reservations on that, but I'm that's one of my challenges. Is that I want to share this and I want to help educate the community to kind of see if we can end this this stigma that's out there. Um, me. Uh, Mi meta es de que uh, las personas puedan vivir, llegar a este lugar, encontrar un hogar y recuperar su, sus vidas. En mis 20 años de, de estar en este tipo de negocio, he visto que los clientes uh, siempre se les ha dicho que tú no puedes hacer esto, no puedes hacer aquello, no tienen la capacidad. Uh, pero es muy lo, contra, muy lo contrario, porque una persona que tiene una deshabilidad como... Estas enfermedades, you know, es más difícil superar, pero nunca es imposible. Nomás necesitan tener el apoyo y el amor y el respeto de las personas que están alrededor de ellos. Y esa es mi meta de, de darle, darles eso. The recovery model is a philosophy. It's a way of thinking. Um, uh, it's, it's not very new, but it's a very strong movement right now within mental health. Um, and basically, at the simplest forms is, you know, you don't have to be symptom free. You just have to be functioning. You have to be able to, to function, take your medications, go to your groups, see your doctors, keep your appointments, and hopefully with the support around the individual, they can recover back their lives. They don't have to be symptom free to be able to go to school. You know, you can have or hear voices or feel depression and fight that wall, climb over it, 
and go work on your goals. You know, just like the person who, who doesn't have any legs can get up and recover their lives and go and, and do whatever they want to do, so can the mentally ill person. La, el modelo de, de recuperación es la filosofía que, que yo quiero poner en, en mi negocio. Uh, en los 20 años uh, he visto que esta filosofía trabaja muy bien. Es una filosofía que ya no es nueva, pero que sí se ha estado implementando más y más en, en la salud mental. Uh, a lo más simple, que es esta filosofía dice que una persona no tiene que estar completamente sin, sin síntomas para poder alcanzar sus metas, nomás que se tome sus medicamentos, vaya a sus grupos, uh, mira a los doctores y con el apoyo y el respeto y el amor de las personas que están alrededor, esa persona puede cumplir sus metas. So es, ese es mi deseo, poder ayudar a esas personas a hacer esto. How am I doing on time? Okay. Uh, my vision. You know, it's sad to say, but um, mentally ill people, they're not respected, they're feared. Um, some, some are hated because we don't understand them. So my hope is that um, through this work that we can help kind of squash that stigma um, and that we can help our residents find a purpose in life so that they can recover. And I think that that's what, in my 20 years of going in and out of boarding cares, that's what I've learned the most. I would go visit clients, they're either just vegging out on a sofa or in their room or in the back smoking. And that's the, the existence of their lives. Nobody's there pushing them or motivating them and letting them know, hey, you can be more than that. So my vision is to be that person that can push them so that they can recover their lives and be more than that if that's what they want. If all they want to do is what they're doing, that's, that's their choice. But I want them to know there's options and then there's people around them that want to help them. You know, unfortunately, when the onset of mental illness hits, it's very hard to deal with the individual. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, I can tell you, um, families, e either they break up or they, they abandon the individual because they become hard to deal with. Not that they're, they're dangerous, it's just that it's, it's hard to always be telling. Imagine a teenager who doesn't listen to you. It, it becomes like that. So I want to be able to provide the structure, the support, the groups, and the, the staffing that is needed. I'm contracting with um, Central City to provide us with medical doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, and social workers to come in along with my staff to be able to do some groups. Uh, mi visión es de poder ayudar al individuo a um, recuperar su vida, como he dicho anterior, pero solo, no solo recuperar su vida, sino encontrar un propósito. En mis 20 años de trabajar en ese negocio, cuando he entrado a negocios como esto, el cliente está fumando, o está durmiendo, o está en su cuarto viendo televisión. Y, no hace nada. So, mi meta es hacer algo más de eso. He, he contratado con una compañía que se llama Central City, que nos va a mandar trabajadores sociales, um, so, psicólogos, doctores y psiquiatras para que nos ayuden a proveer servicios con ellos y con las personas que, que, que yo voy a, a darles empleo. Mi staff, queremos, vamos a empujar al cliente si ellos quieren hacer más de lo que pueden ser. How am I going to do this? Well, this, this is your normal eight-hour day. One, at the core, at the foundation of what we're going to do is medications. So there's our medication hours. If a doctor, uh, it's usually medications are four times a day. If they need to be more than that, then we'll plug it in where it's necessary. Then... I'm sorry, I left my glasses. Um, does that say group? Um, groups. And I want to implement lots of groups with the help of Central City, with the help of my staff. And this is where we're going to be teaching uh, these life skills. I have another slide that kind of outlines what kind of groups. Oh, sorry, there's the groups. Uh, the other ones, I'm sorry, was meals. The other thing that I noticed when I would go visit uh, one of my clients is calling John. You know, I said, John, what do you want to do today? What do you want to work on? He goes, David, take me somewhere to eat. And that was 
I kid you not, without exaggerating, about 80, 90 percent of the time, that's what the client wanted. Because at these facilities, these boarding cares, they were just given bologna sandwiches or chicken breasts. Nothing really appetizing. Nothing really that you and I would say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm dining instead of eating. So my idea is, is to provide better than that so that the clients can be happy, satisfied, and hopefully moving towards um, encouraging them to come to groups, encouraging them to, to work on their life goals. Here are some of the groups. Um, my Meds and Me, okay, teaching the clients the importance of why they're taking my medications, managing diabetes. A lot of these clients tend to develop diabetes because, unfortunately, a lot of these medications have metabolic disorders that cause uh, things like diabetes. Pastoral care, to me, is very important. A person is not, a, it, there's many facets to an individual, and their spirituality is one of them. So uh, this is how I want to focus, you bringing in um, local churches to provide some services, to provide some help, counseling, um, some Bible studies, or whatever their faith is. Um, the road to work, building elect, uh, effective work skills, dressing for success, time management, a lot of stuff where, like I mentioned, when the onset of the mental illness hits, they lose out on these. So in these groups, I kind of want to just focus on that, the stuff that they missed out because of, of the onset of the mental illness. Uh, towards the bottom, um, want to provide some movie nights, some barbecue nights, and some outings. Okay? My goal is eventually to invite the community. You want to come out and watch a movie here in the courtyard with us? Come and do it. You know, I want to be neighborly, and I want to teach my clients to be neighborly. And I think that's a good way to do it. Okay? There's what we talked about before, and a big question is staffing. It's kind of hard to see on these slides. Um, phase one, which is 36 beds, um, I want to have three what I would call mental health workers in the morning, the licensed administrator and the assistant, a cook, and then kind of in between uh, shifts, I want to add another mental health worker and another cook. The middle shift, the second shift, add another, another two, and then another middle shift between the second shift and the third shift, and then two staff at night, and then myself. Um, as we graduate or we're able to move to phase two, um, uh, our staffing ratios will increase as well. Uh, one of the things that I did not talk about, uh, and I know the, uh, the community has some concerns, is around our perimeter we're going to install a gate, cameras throughout. Um, we're going to make it so that we know that when a client is leaving, it's not a, we're not a facility, we're a home. I keep emphasizing that so the residents, like your sons or daughters at home, can come and go. But my house rules are going to be you have to sign out because I need to know who's home in case of a fire, in case of an earthquake. I, my staff need to know who help, who is not there so they can go get them out or we can tell the fire department or the police department who's missing. Um, we're going to have cameras also within the facility as well. And again, the cameras are not for you know, because we're bringing in dangerous people, it's just for the safety of my clients. You know, I don't want people coming in that are not supposed to be in there and, and doing stuff that they're not supposed to. Um, on a little bit of the architecture, so those are our three uh, present buildings. Um, right now, if you drive down that block, it's there's probably like three properties that are vacant. Um, there's nothing there, and they're, they're looking pretty run down. Um, our idea is to really beautify the exteriors and the interiors of the buildings to hopefully, um, you know, start bringing some life and making the neighborhood look better. Um, phase two, um, that'll come uh, down the road, hopefully, and that'll add um, some uh, two-story building, which is total capacity of 96 beds um, if it's approved. that there's the gate that I was talking about uh, that's going to cover the the front that gate will remain closed only it will be allowed um, is for employees to come in and out of the building um, case of emergencies the fire department or ambul ambulances can go through there there's going to be a walk-up gate with a keypad with with a camera that will ring to the inside and we will know who's coming in and who's going out of our facility That's pretty much it.
Uh, allow me to ask a question before I open up to the general public. Are, so are we are we talking about demolishing the current dwellings? No. We're, um, I can go back. So we're, we're, no, we're talking, there's three current buildings right. right now. Yes. We're talking about remodeling those, fixing the exteriors, putting some stone, making them look really nice, adding some pergolas, uh, putting a new slurry coat on the, uh, the current driveway. There's a little property to the right of us that the driveway is on their side, so we'll build a new driveway, build a wall so we can divide the, the two properties and fix the landscaping uh, around the perimeter of the building. All right. Okay. Council members have any questions at this point? Yes. Yeah. Council member Cruz, uh, Vice Mayor Cruz Baca. Um, how long will they be staying? Is that long-term care? Um, it's a home. So as long as they want to be there, as long as they follow the rules and uh, are respectful of our house and the community, they can be there. And you're housing both male and female? Both male and female. Thank you. Right. Uh, Ricardo, Just a, a quick question. Tell me a little bit more about your security. How are you going to have cameras? Uh, is somebody going to watch them 24 hours? Who's going to watch them you know, at that time? Um, um, yeah, that our administrator and our system administrator, which is going to be my, my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. um, they're going to be um, watching the cameras, watching the staff. Um, thankfully, their technology is really nice these days, so they're they can go right to my phone so that I can also be monitoring. Um, I, I work right now for the um, Department of Mental Health. So once the business gets up and going and it can sustain itself, then I eventually I would leave my, my present employer and be there full time. Um, but while I'm, I'm working, um, the administrator and my wife are gonna be the ones spending. I'll be there on the weekends and on my days off as well. Mm -hmm. And of uh, your senior staff, what kind of experience do they have to run this type of facility? I mean, have they done it before? Community or? care licensing, um, the, because of the, the number of beds that we're going to have, require that the administrator that I hire have a certain amount of experience and, and education to be able to run that facility. Uh, the staff that I hire, um, we're going to do a lot of trainings. I'm hoping, hoping to hire people uh, that already have experience. Um, when I, before I came a nurse, uh, a psych tech, I used to work in a place like this, uh, and that's how I got my, my experience. And so I think that's kind of what I also want to target is maybe going to Mount Sac and, and seeing if some of these, um, these kids or men and women want to come and, and work at our facility as well. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. No further questions at this point. I want to thank you very much for the presentation. I will now open it up for the general public for, <clears throat> for input information only. So, at this point, las personas que quieren hablar, esta es la oportunidad. Yes, 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 sorry about that. Yes, so this is, this is a public communication with regard to the actual project itself. All right, yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Christina Hello. Lucero, 4202 Stewart okay. Avenue, Ballon Park, resident, parent, and a school board member. I have some concerns about this. While I agree adult mental health services do need to be provided, they do not need to be provided that close to our schools. Some of the concerns I have is that while there are rules in place, as adults, they have the right to refuse medication. They have the right to not follow rules. They have the right to go out. Are they with three staff and 36 filled beds, if you have two or more residents that become assaultive, how are they going to handle that? You don't have enough staff to handle that. He also talked about they're not going to accept anyone with um, history of violence or sexual predators. That just could mean there's no documentation or those symptoms have not manifested yet. So there's a lot of unknowns and in putting this so close to our children, my issue is we are not going to protect our, the mental health of our children, their emotional and physical safety. All it takes is one time for someone not necessarily wanting to, but because they're not on meds, because they're hearing voices to hurt one of our children, my question to you is, how much are our children's safety, emotional, and mental well-being worth to you? And again, I have a lot of concerns, whereas, like I said, there are need for these services, not right next to a school. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good evening, Chief.
Good evening, Mayor Lozano, Honorable Council Members, Community Members. My name is Jill Poe, and I am the Chief of Police for the Baldwin Park Unified School District School Police Department. I'm here on behalf of the Baldwin Park Unified School District and Superintendent Seviano. We understand the need to have facilities that support the mental health communities. We as a district are concerned that the facility is in close proximity to De Anza Elementary School. These clients have various medical issues that have been spoken to here tonight regarding bipolar, schizophrenia, and depression. All of these require strong medications. Without these medications or refusal of the medications, these individuals become violent, whether through outbursts or through physical um, assaults. Uh, and if you've been a police officer as long as I have, as well as Chief Taylor has, dealing with these individuals can become very difficult. Another major concern is the staffing to the client ratio of the facility and the facility being unlocked and open at all times. We have a lot of family members that live in close proximity of De Anza Elementary School and they need to feel safe that they can walk the streets um, of the community at any time without any concern for their safety. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Lozano, Good Council evening. Members, and community. My name is Madalena Arellano, Assistant Superintendent with Baldwin Park Unified School District. I am here on behalf of the district and Superintendent Dr. Seviano to speak on the Wayne Manor Adult Daycare Community Development. This adult daycare is located very close to De Anza School, right behind the school, and we have heard from the surrounding community and the staff, members of the school. The district is not in favor of having this facility develop and open, and we thank you for your time. I'd like to say it in Spanish, if I can. Absolutely, yes. Uh, muy buenas tardes, alcalde Lozano, miembros del Concilio y Comunidad de Baldwin Park. Me llamo Madalena Arellano, superintendente auxiliar del Distrito Baldwin Park. Estoy aquí de parte del Distrito y el superintendente Dr. Seviano para hablar sobre el tema Wayne Manor. Este hogar de cuidado de adultos con disabilidades mentales está localizado detrás de la escuela de Anza. Hemos oído de la comunidad de Anza y del personal de la escuela. El distrito no está en favor en el desarrollo de este hogar. Muchísimas gracias por su, su tiempo. Right, thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Norma Munoz and I live here in Baldwin Park for the last 21 years. Today I'm here uh, representing some of the parents and grandparents that attend the school and live around the community of De Anza School. Uh, we are really worried about the safety and well-being of our children and the families who live around the facility. As you already are aware, the plan is to construct the facility behind De Anza School. The families and those children that walk are approximately 633 students in the ANSA, plus the students that walk back and forth from the junior high and, and high school that are surrounding that facility. We were, when we elected you to these positions, you have assured us that the welfare of the community, community and the city was the top most important thing. So I, I ask you now, what are you going to do to keep our children, families, and community safe. Over many years, this community has endured construction problems, vandalism, not to mention that the homeless population is increasing around the, the park that's around the Anza School, 7-Eleven, and the Target Shopping Center. Some of our homes have been affected by the overpass construction and noise and dirt over the several projects, and yet, the citizens keep on working and trying to do their best. But I think enough is enough. This is adding to more of the worries and concerns we as parents have. Please do your job and keep us safe. We are not against a treatment of people who need help, and nor do we have stigma against those patients like the owner mentioned in, our, in, in a meeting that was held before and tonight. But please find another location where the impact and safety of our children is not as in jeopardy. Take the recovery model where children and families are not affected. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good evening. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Angel Gomez. I'm a resident of Baum Park. 
Uh, I also have children that attend Deans Elementary, which is why I have concerns, and I'm, I'm sure a bunch of parents that are here tonight. Uh, to Mayor Manuel Lozano, mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco, Council Member Monica Garcia, Council Member Susan Rubio, Mark Castanola, and Amy Harbin, we thank you in advance for your attention. We come to you as members of the, uh, the Bon Park community and concerned residents, parents, and community members. The reason for this is uh, to express our concerns about the upcoming construction of Wayne Manor, the mental health facility, uh, the project. This project in progress will be a home for people with mental illness such as schizophrenia, bipolar, and severe depression. Uh, it is located uh, at 12766 Torch Street in Balm Park, uh, which is about 75 feet away from DeAnne's Elementary. Um, we are concerned for the safety and security of our children and students of Deanza and our neighborhood as well. Uh, the person who would be in charge of, we, we believe, of the facility is Mr. Colomo. We recently had a meeting with him, and he left us with many unanswered, unanswered questions. Um, and apprehension about the home that he's trying to build. Uh, the meeting was on March 6, 2015. Mr. Colomo said that there would be about 34 clients and only three staff members, which leads us to believe which is not many. Uh, we believe that this is an insufficient number of staff for the amount of people that they will have. We also have concerns about the training and experience of the staff to be able to manage and handle so many clients with different types of mental illnesses. Um, it was also stated that the clients will eventually go up to 100. The home will, all, uh, will allow clients to come and go in and out as they wish without supervision. The home will not make it mandatory for clients who wish to stay at the home to take any needed or required medication to help in the managing of their mental illness. If there is an incident between clients in the community and the school children, Mr. Como said that he or the home will not take any responsibility or have any liability or will have no liability. We're concerned and worried about the possible negative impact this home will have on our community. We affirm that this location is too close to the proximity of DeAnne's Elementary School. It will also be near apartment buildings with tenants, most, mostly families and children who often play on sidewalks. Uh, just letting us a potential risk between unsupervised adult clients and children who normally play just outside the apartments. Many of our community members are, members are parents of children who attend programs such as LAUP, State Preschool, Special Education Head Start, and Speech Therapy Clinics for the preschool age students. Um, again, not saying that we are not for it all. You know, it's great to help, you know, mentally challenged people, but it's not near the school. It poses a great threat. Your time's up. All right, okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay, Mo Long, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Tim. I'm the resident and also a parent. Uh, my son goes to De Anza Elementary School. Well, I'm just like many concerned parents here. Um, I know Mr. David Colomo described this facility as if he was building a Disneyland right behind the school, which is not true. Ultimately, it's a mental hospital. I know it's good revenues for the city and also for Mr. David here. But guess who's paid for the ultimate price at the end? It's the kids that go to that school and also the staff. Mr. David uh, did not inform you he's going to build a six-foot fence that divides the school and his facility. In other words, a fat person like me, 5'4", could literally jump over that fence easily. Could you imagine an average person, 5'8", or so, with heavily medicated, would probably jump over and sexually assaulted his staff and the kids there. Therefore, I, you know, I'm here just to ask uh, City Council in your kind heart and your power and abilities to stop this project, just like many other parents here. I'm sure they do agree on this. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Good evening. I was a resident here at Baldwin Park and I have family here. Um, I did understand that this is a mental home. I have seen Mr. David shake his head when it's referred to as a hospital. Um, my concern is that there initially there's going to be four people, that four employees. 
that are going to take care of 34 people. I am not so sure about the training that he, say, he says I have. I do, I'm taking a psychology class. I understand that he's trying not to let other people see the stigma behind the people with these disorders. Uh, my concern is that if he only has four people, how is he going to maintain them on their medication? What if he, they do refuse to take the medication? Because they do have the right to refuse medication. He did say he was going to talk to the doctor, but either way, we all have a right for that. Uh, another concern was the space. I actually looked it up on Google Maps, and it doesn't look like a pretty big space to fit 94 people. Um, there's going to be a gate, but it doesn't look like there's enough space for people to be staying there. Um, there's also the safety of the public and the children, like open house or when they want to go out for Halloween. How is he going to keep the, ch the safety of the children safe? And is there, does he really believe it's safe to be near an elementary school? I mean, they're little. Some people let their children walk by themselves because of family circumstances. Um, and then I want to know how well he does. No, does he really know his patients? Because it sounds like he doesn't have a, deg a doctorate degree to really know them. If he has spent time with them, I want to know how long he spent time with them to really know these people and know how severe their um, disease or disorder is. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Brenda Macias. I'm a resident of Baldwin Park. I have three kids in the Anson school, and my concern, we have a lot of concern with the parents. Um, I don't, I know the mental um, people, they have issues because all of, they're all over the news. You know, the shootings in the school, mostly they, they're the people that they have mental issue. issue. Um, we have assemblies, we have um, open house, we have how he's going to prevent not, for his clients not to come inside the school. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thomas Carey, a former Please resident of Baldwin Park. Uh, we should place the blame where it really belongs. Ronald Reagan. He's the one that closed the mental hospitals to save the government money. Now we're paying for all this homeless and all these other problems, these people going nuts, not taking their medication, getting shot by the police, and being suing the cities for this, suing the cities for that. They had places for this problem these people. Not necessarily a problem, but a place to treat them and make sure they couldn't get out where the fence was but 15 feet high. Um, they, give them all, they closed them all, now they have all these rights. What's this going to do to these people's property values over there? So any money you're getting from this person that for more taxes or whatever money you're getting, you're going to lose it on the other end and property values go down the drain. I mean, I don't understand why you'd even put that near a school anyway. As soon as that came up, it should have been said, not there. An industrial type area or somewhere away from schools. There's no reason to put that there. If this guy chose to buy land and build one of these things there near a school, he knew the school was there. Just like people who live by near an airport, they know the airport's there. So. I, I don't understand why it would even get this far. I don't know why it would even get through the stages to get even to this point where you have to have a public hearing. Uh, it seemed maybe there were some campaign contributions in the past. Maybe that's how it got this far. I, I don't know. I don't know why you'd build that there. I mean, why it would even be considered. The kids don't need to see that. A six-foot high fence isn't going to keep these people from scaling it anyway maybe 10 feet high, I, I, but it shouldn't even be there. It shouldn't be built there. It should be built out in a way from schools in a more an industrial type area in case there's problems. These people don't take their medications. You hear it all the time. And then the family suddenly says, oh, well, they killed my kid because this and that because he wasn't taking his medication. Well, they knew that. So why didn't they keep these people on a shorter leash, keep them at home? You know why? because they don't want to be bothered until something happens, then it's, uh, it's the police's fault. The police are supposed to know that these people, anybody is nuts. Uh, I guess they should assume everybody's that then. 
Um, but this shouldn't be built there. Find another place. Why is Baldwin Park being a dumping ground for these developers who want to build all these weird projects? Now this. Why? Why are you doing that to these people here? I want to come back to the area, but I wouldn't want to live next door to that. The train is bad enough. The train's predictable. Sorry, three minutes is up. But this, right. this is this is unnecessary. Thank you. Okay. The time's up. Thank you very much. My name is Josefina Gonzalez. I am a resident of Baldwin Park. Mi inglés es muy malo y prefiero hablar en español. Está bien. Um, yo creo que el ideal del señor Coloma es muy loable. Sin embargo, estamos hablando de una zona residencial y estamos hablando de la cercanía con la escuela, donde hay niños que uh, desde los tres años hasta los doce años, son niños pequeños. Uh, él nos puede decir que las personas van a estar medicadas, aún medicadas es un gran riesgo, porque estas personas pueden estar bien por largos periodos de tiempo. Yo creo que las noticias nos han dado últimamente bastantes ejemplos de lo que puede suceder, porque no se sabe qué es lo que en su mente algo detona una situación de estrés o de una circunstancia que a ellos los vuelva peligrosos. Y yo creo que tenemos el ejemplo muy claro en el copiloto que tenía una depresión, había estado viviendo por mucho tiempo de manera normal, tranquila, y resulta que uh, mató a 150 personas. Yo no quiero ni siquiera que suceda un incidente con mi hija ni con el hijo de ninguno de los que uh, van a Vianza, ni tampoco con las personas que vamos a, a llevar a nuestros niños a, al Parque Barnes, que suficiente tenemos ya con la, las personas adictas que se acercan y tenemos que estar cuidando a los niños, a que no que ellos no se acerquen a los baños, que no los sigan. Entonces, yo creo que ustedes uh, deben ver por la tranquilidad de nosotros como padres y como residentes de Baldwin Park. Gracias. Muy bien, gracias. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carla Diaz. I've been living in Baldwin Park since... I was six years old. I'm 26 right now. Um, I think everybody is afraid. I have a schizophrenic son, and he's bipolar. He's seven, and I'm afraid of my own son. So, I mean, he's this small, and thinking about older people, I mean, going to the, house, um, to the apartments. They're going to be at the parks right next to the school. We just had an open house at the school today, and... I think it's, we're not saying no, but maybe somewhere else. It's really close to the school. I mean, I'm, I'm really afraid of my own son and to be um, other people who have um, older parents right there and I mean, just not at the school, please. Thank you. Hello, City Council, residents of Baldwin Park. Um, you know, in Germany, a couple of days ago, not too long ago, some person that passed all the physical things of a psychiatrist. And what happened to this person? He took 149 people with him. Is that what you people want? It might not be 149, it might be one. But that's what you city council people are looking at. And I'm pretty sure you guys have kids or you have grandchildren. Is that what you want for your grandkids? It sure looks like it. City, Baldwin Park is becoming the dumping city of the San Gabriel Valley. They give free land away. You can put anything you want. They'll vote it in. That's what you people have been doing. We're tired of giving our land away. It's not for you people to give it away. You want to give a piece of land away? You ask the 75,000 people or 80,000 people that live here if they want to give it away. You know why people don't come to your city council meetings? Because no matter how much we complain, you don't listen. The other two, I should say the other one, She's never here. She don't care. 
the other gentleman is giving the land away. And you, Mayor, I'll agree to it. I've yet to come here and have you three, Garcia, Lozano, and Pacheco, say, no, we're not going to give our land away. You guys get no income from any of this. We give it away. And you people sit there thinking, oh, man, what a great deal we did. This gentleman says from 2 to 4 or 2, 4, whatever, we'll have the people away. What do you do with the rest of the day? Some kid walked by, boom, there he goes. Alvin Park's famous for kind of junk like that. Also, none of these people that have spoke for this outfit has come up and said, I have a bachelor's degree, a PhD, uh, I'm a, a doctor, I'm a lawyer, and so on and so on. None of them. You know why? Because they say, go to Baldwin Park, they'll give you anything. Think about it, Mayor and Mr. Pacheco. And when you see Garcia, tell her the same damn thing. You people cannot keep giving our city away. What do these people do? Paying you guys or doing something to you guys? You look at me like saying, there he goes again. Well, darn it. We're tired and tired of doing and telling you the same thing. Why do you continue doing that? Okay. Mr. Luna, time's up. There goes my three minutes again. <laughs> I just. Okay. All right. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Sorry. Good afternoon, um, council members. Um, my name is Angelica Leva. I'm actually a parent of a student at the ANSA school. I do have family in Baldwin Park. And while we understand the need for um, this type of facilities, we also have the need as community to have these facilities be away from our kids, from our family. I personally have a kid that would have to be walking from school and to school, and I don't feel that it will be safe. So there's a potential risk in between the, the process of these people of recovery um, that they can revert back to drugs, and well, we don't want to take that chance with our kids um, or having injuries or any other type of things. So um, we would like to minimize these accidents by avoiding these type of facilities close to our area. If it's possible, you know, look somewhere else, please. This is our community. All right, thank you. Gracias. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay. Yes. Not doing anything. Just receiving file. Greg Tuttle, business Thanks. owner. Um, I'm I'm pretty rest assured that the council is going to make the right decision on this manor thing, and that um, it is really too close to the school. We all know that. We all agree with that. And I think if he picks another spot in the city, somewhere where it's away from the schools, the small kids, and families. That'll be much safer for the community. A couple other things I want to talk about, too, is your special agenda listings at mm -hmm. special events to be restored. We still need, we're still in saving mode. We, we don't have this great abundance of money, and I think we need to keep it down until we see what the next year's budget's going to bring into us. But to come in, jump in here, do the fireworks, do all this stuff, that isn't what the city needs at this time. We need to get our employees taken care of, get their raises going, Finish up what you guys started. So we need to do that first. That's priority over all these other special events because these people work for the city and do the services for the citizens. The other thing is, uh, Mayor, with your friend with this house, L.A. has developed a, a, a law also with houses being built on lots and building these big mansions in behind other houses and everything else, and they've done restrictions on it. Their state has restrictions on this. This thing of trying to help out your friend is going to end up in a lot of mess. Because if we got to change state code for just you, then what makes everybody other council members bring in their friends? These houses, as we went around and did campaign signs, we saw how a lot of houses, big houses, gigantic houses, build on these lots. And they look out of place. 
If they want to build a house, tear down the front one and build one big house and put a small maid quarters in the back. But wasting a lot of staff time bringing this thing up every time. And I don't know how much he donates or whatever's going on, but we need to worry about the city staff time and make them use it for useful time. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Okay. If not, I now close the public communication. At this point, legal counsel, you want to mention something? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In response to some of the questions about this project, um, the applicant has a legal right to apply for this permit, and the city can't stop them from doing that. Um, and so that's why this is happening, and that, that's why we're getting to this process, because anybody that wanted to, to do a project in Baldwin Park, they have a legal right to apply for that project. And then we go through this process, so that's why we're doing this. Uh, and it is, uh, it's a legal requirement, okay? All right. Okay, thank you, legal counsel. Real quick, just want to mention, um, Amy Harvey, and I guess we'll let everyone know uh, when this will go to the planning commission so that where Mr. David will actually officially apply. So I don't, do we have an idea? <clears throat> A.B. Harvey is our city planner. Thank you, Amy. Mr. Mayor, council members, the applicant has not even formally submitted yet. I'm anticipating that after tonight, they will start the first step of the process, which is design review, which is the process by which the planning department and all the other various departments within the city will look at the project, see if it meets the, their, their code requirements and things like that. Once it goes through that process, then they will apply for the conditional use permit, which will then go before the council. At this point, I don't have a timeline. All right. Okay, so I guess what we'll do is um, make sure that everyone is informed uh, so that this way they're not, and I guess maybe the, the, the best way would be to go through um, a De Anza or the school district in itself uh, so that everyone is, is well informed the actual process itself. So. I've actually already started a Wayne oh, Manor notification list, mm -hmm. and I believe I do have some De Anza staff members on it already. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Jamie. At this point, Constable yeah, Constable, just yes. to repeat in Spanish that uh, our staff has said that this project is at the very beginning stages. Mm -hmm. They This is just a presentation. They haven't even applied yet for the project, so I, I'll get there. Thank you. I, I will say that. <laughs> I'll get to the Spanish part. I just want to make sure everybody understands that we're, this project hasn't even started. It just, we did a presentation. The applicant is starting the process, and he hasn't even brought it to the city yet. When it does get to the city, it goes through planning first, and and then later on, if there's a, an appeal, it comes to the city council. So there's been no decision here made at the city council level. I want to say that the one who will apply for the project that they have, has not yet started the project. Va empezando ahorita nomás, uh, hicieron una presentación para que todos se puedan informar lo que se va a hacer, pero todavía la persona, la compañía no ha ponido un solicitud para empezar el proceso. El proceso empieza cuando ellos ponen su solicitud, la, la ciudad lo acepta, va a Planning Commission primero y es otro uh, mesa directiva que va a revisar todos los, los planes y van a votar si o no se puede seguir. Si no sigue el, si ellos dicen que no puede seguir, el aplicante puede a, a traerlo en frente del City Council por otro voto. Entonces el proceso todavía tiene tiempo, la, la City Council todavía no hemos uh, revisado esto o ni a, uh, a votar en esta ocasión. So, yo sé que algunas personas que vinieron a, a hablar hicieron cosas y se confundieron con otros proyectos. Este proyecto ni ha empezado. Uh, so es importante que uh, buscan en el website uh, cuando va a empezar el, 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 uh, el Planning Commission para que ustedes puedan empezar a ir a Planning Commission para decir su opinión. Uh, también vamos a empezar el siguiente junta a las 7 y también tenemos otro public hearing si quieren seguir hablando ahí. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Right, thank you, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. At this point, we have nothing else and we don't have nothing to report out from closed session. Uh, we're going to have to move the actual uh, uh, property one for Lanty to the following meeting. Uh, so that's what we'll do at this point. Uh, and then we're going to move the, um, actually, let me just look at this real quick. Yeah, what we'll do is go ahead and move over the, um, 
uh, the restoring of the city events uh, to the following meeting, as well as the R R one two dwelling units. Oh, uh, is that a motion? Right? Yes, yeah, so that's okay, my motion. So I'll, I'll second to second, uh, move any, a restoring city objection? events to the following meeting. Yes. And R12 uh, dwelling unit development standards to our All following right. meeting. Sounds good. Thank you. The car, go ahead. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the study session. Thank you.